Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. And may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ, come to guide your mind, your intellect, your wisdom, and your reasoning in order for you to know how to choose the best and according to God's will for your life. To choose the best of this life according to the will of God. Because not always what we think is best for us is the best that God wants for us. And many people have this conflict within them permanently. They want to impose their will to God. And God, obviously, will not accept it. So, they have left these people with their own personal projects and dreams and eventually they will get hurt and they will reap the fruit of these bad choices. And that's what the world is going through. The world is experiencing the result of these choices. So within the will, the pleasure that human beings are seeking, it's always at the deep, deep down is always towards evil, always for evil. Because if human beings knew how to choose what is good, the world wouldn't be what it is. We see this principle in marriage, for example. A person gets married and they think that because the other person looks good, the guy is muscled, looking good, he's a cool guy, he has money, financial conditions, oh, he's the best for me. And it's not, it's not always the best. So you see, dear friend, that the femicide that we see, the killing amongst couples that is happening all over the world, is scary because of bad choices, horrible choices that contradict God's choices, God's will for a person. But then you ask, What's God's will for my life? Well, talk to Him. Ask Him. Speak to Him. That's what God gave us the Holy Spirit for. To guide us according to His will, because His will is the best. His will is always the best. Will always be the best. It's so good. His will is so good, but so good that God doesn't even have pleasure in the death of the wicked. He has no pleasure. He said like this, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Look at that. Then he complements, Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why? Why should you die? Why should you die, O house of Israel? Why should you die? Because of your own will? Because you want to impose your desires and your will on me? By the way, I wanted to tell you, yesterday we spoke about the gold and the altar, or the gift or the altar that is more important, which is greater, Jesus asked, which is greater, the, the gift or the altar, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. So we know that it's the altar that is the most important. We know that it's the temple that sanctifies the gold. However, what God wants to say through that is that what's more important, your physical being, your body, or your soul? Tell me, what's more important? Your body, your body, which is perishable, that has an expiry date. We all do, with no exception. We all have an expiry date. Our body has an expiry date. So, what's more important? The body that has an expiry date, or the soul, which is eternal, that never dies. It doesn't die. The soul never dies. The soul doesn't die. 
Know these. Don't forget these. The soul is eternal. And what is the soul? The soul is the center of our, our desires, of our feelings, of our will. The soul will only have eternal life when it submits itself to the Spirit of God. When the soul submits to the Spirit of God, then the soul will be living in the kingdom of God. When the Spirit of God leads our mind, our soul, then we start to live in the kingdom of God, subject to God's rules, subject to His grace, His goodness, His mercy, His love. But when we resist, we resist to submit to the will of God, to the Spirit of God, then obviously, of course, as certain as God exists, you, I, and whoever does that will be harmed. Will be harmed. The end will be harmed. That's why the Apostle Paul says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of people. Why? Who is the God of this age? It's the God. It's money. It's the offering. The God of this age is what people can touch, hold, feel. The God of this age is the one that imposes, that imposes that vision. The more money you have, the happier you are going to be. This is the God of this age. So the devil offers many things. He makes the gold shine extremely strong so that people will forget about their soul and will put all of their strength in their appearance, in their physical body. You are seeing there, we are seeing people who were young and when they were young they looked good and they grew old, they started to wither like a, an old dried prune and then after what they want to fix it and then they put Botox here and surgery and add here and remove from there and this and that and they look like a monster. Worse than an old dried prune, it's better to be an old dried prune but that is authentic and real than to be a monster, a monster, a monster indeed. Why? Because they opted for the body. The desire is to improve their body, to have a better appearance, and it's pointless to paint it, because the more you paint a monster, the worse it looks. That's the reality. Therefore, dear friend, pay close attention, use your intelligence. What's more important, your body or your soul? Your body or your soul? So, just for you to have an idea, just for you to have a tiny idea of what the soul is. For example, a person who is depressed. What is depression? Depression is in the soul. It's the soul that is suffering. It's the soul that is screaming for help. It's the soul that is in anguish, that is desperate. It's the soul that is dying. It's dying. It's dying, little by little. And it dies in agony. So, when you opt, you choose to invest in your soul, in your soul, then you will seek what? To do the will of God, to hear the word of God. Just by hearing the word of God, the person that has depression, they already feel better. They feel a bit of peace already. One of these days, a gentleman came here and he said, how much is it that you guys charge in order to heal me from depression? And then the pastor asked, what do you have to give? He said, oh, the maximum I can give is 200,000 reais. It's all that I have. And the pastor said, no, this is too little. 
In order for you to heal your soul, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to surrender the soul on the altar. You have to place your soul on the altar. It's all, your entire soul, meaning your will, your desires, your dreams, your projects, everything you have to place on the altar and be submissive to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the Holy Spirit. And he felt good afterwards. He got the spirit because it's not about money. The person can have all money in the world. They can have power. The authority, the maximum authority of this world may be upon them from a country, from a place or whatever. But what matters is the following. If they do not obey, if they do not submit their soul or their will, their desire to the will of God, then they will suffer. There is no money, there is no social position, beauty, there is nothing in this world that can heal a person from depression, only the power of God. But the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit, comes upon those who want to submit to Him. So what's more important in your life, your body or your soul? You invest in your future, but how much longer will you live? You expect to live 50, 60, 50 years ahead, to have uh, old age with a good health care and so on. But sooner or later, you, you die. We will go down to the grave. But those who obey, those who hear, those who pay attention to the Word of God, these are happy. These are rich, rich. Why? Because they have the wealth which is the Lord of the glory within them. So God said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, in the death of a person with depression. I have no pleasure in the despair of a person with depression. But I want the one who is depressed to turn away from evil. Meaning, I want them to submit to my will because my will is better for them. My will is the best thing for them. You see, for example, when a person is desperate, they go there to Psalm 91 and they already feel relieved. But then they close the Bible and all the issues come back again. So what's the point of enjoying liking a certain verse of the Bible, a message from God, but then they don't apply in their life. So, dear friend, what is more important? What has been more important in your life? Your money, your gold, your family, your marriage, your engagement, your house, your personal projects, your diploma, or your soul? What's more important? Think about that, and later on you answer me. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.